Greg, who are you? Tell us who you are. Okay, um, I'm a, I'm a uh, songwriter, uh, a professional songwriter, uh, Emmy-winning, Grammy-nominated songwriter, whatever that means. Now these these days, it's all, it's all about next. So, uh, you know, you, you sit and we write songs and we, we, uh, we write, uh, I, I, of course, I score things. I, mo I do movie supervision for, for movies. Uh, we've done a uh, number of projects from everything from God knows real estate things to to uh, to silly short films. I mean, crazy things that we've done. But uh, uh, I've 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 had a chance to be thrown in the middle of everything, which teaches you a lot and how to land on your feet, you know, in the business. But basically, I'm a professional songwriter, and I've I started doing that for a living. I moved over into the news music space. I, a lot of uh, if you watch uh, in your TV channels, if you have scripts. Or you have uh, news. New, uh, there's uh, Next Star, which is they own television uh, groups. They own like they own like News Nation. We do stuff for CNN, Fox, everybody. But we do uh, music for them as well. And we do a lot of it in the box, and that means we record it uh, in, in in the computer using like the BBC String Library. Then we add uh, overlay uh, woodwinds and strings, so it saves a lot of money for these guys. And, and, and then when we do big projects, of course, we, we, we go in and we, we go into Ocean Way or we, uh, we do, uh, you know, the, the full-blown package, you know. So, uh, but uh, I have uh, experience in everything from um, writing songs for the movie to music, music supervision to the complete score. And we're working on two movies right now, uh, um, you know, for TriStar. So, anyway, that being said. And y'all remember Spirit of Louisiana, right? The Spirit of Louisiana. That's just it makes right Louisiana here. home. That's anyway. when I first met you. How long ago is that now? God bless. Well, I don't know, man. We're getting old. Years ago. Oh, my God. Uh, D. Joyce, right? D. 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 Channel 4. We yeah. love D. Joyce, don't Boy, we? Boy, we love D, man. Yeah, we miss her. She's yeah. out in uh, San Francisco now. So. Is that where she is? I haven't seen yep. her in years. Yep. And uh, Jay Weigel, who are you? What do you do? Uh, okay, well, I am. Uh, I'm a composer. At my core, I'm a composer. Uh, I um, I think Greg and I worked on a Christmas, one of those Christmas ones with the Friendly Travelers. Wasn't that you, Greg? Way we, back in Channel Four. Yes, 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 yes. We did. We worked on that. Yeah, for sure. Yep. That, that was, was way back. But anyhow, um, I make my living. I like to make my living scoring film and television. Uh, I am not by. Uh, I do not define myself as a songwriter. I co-write songs. I do not think of myself that way. I'll just give you an idea what I'm doing now. I got my start because I was in New Orleans my whole life. I got my start in commercials and television, similar to Greg's path, but it was more scoring, underscoring commercials as opposed to jingles and writing uh, things that required singing. I was more the background guy. I used to do two or three commercials a week back in the day down there. Yep. But um, then I moved more into the, the space of film and TV because I'm a trained composer. And I, I like to it's still write for the symphony. I've written four operas and I've written violin concertos and symphonies. So right now I'm working on, I'm finishing up, I say finishing, finishing. I have to record a score. Greg, if you're up here, you're welcome to come the 25th and 26th at Ocean Way. Great. Great. Film. I'm, to give you an idea, I record on January 25th, and I still have 20 minutes of the film to score. That's how these timelines have become. Mm -hmm. You get, you know, three weeks to score a film and get it ready, and there's a lot to do to get something ready. But I'm also working on a piece for the Louisiana Philharmonic. They commissioned a piece. I've got John Cleary in. I've got the full orchestra, John Cleary, Judith Owen. Um, I've got uh, Philip Manuel and an opera singer, Sarah J. McMahon. So I, I do a lot of music that sort of blends a lot of styles when I write my concert music for fun. Mm -hmm. And then next week, if you're, in, if you're in New Orleans, and Reed, you should come for sure, I've done five more arrangements for the LPO with Tank and the Bangas. So they're going to be doing a concert with 11. Tank and the Bangas is playing with the full orchestra and 11 of the songs I arrange. I think P.J. Morton singing on it as well. Great, so, great. so I do a lot of things. I fill a space of a composer who can write classical music, Film music, music and, and, and interface, interface between the pop world and R&B world with the classical world. 
-hmm. So um, that's sort of my background. Cool. And uh, my name is Reed Wick. I'm a local musician. Been doing that most of my life, but I also um, by day serve uh, as the membership and industry relations representative for the Recording Academy, which is the Grammy organization. And I've been in that role for 16 years. And I first met Jay. I was one of the sing. I used to sing with the Louisiana. What were we called back then? The Louisiana Vocal Arts Chorale. And I sang in Dawn of the Floating City. And what's your other opera? I did two of your operas. Yeah, you did that one, and you did. Uh... You think I could remember the name of my own pieces, couldn't you? Uh, It'll come to me one I day. think I actually saw the scores. I, ha I ran across them when I was doing some cleaning during the holidays. I was like, oh, i got to make sure I bring that up with Jay. But, um, but I've been uh, super active in the world of public policy in Louisiana and, and uh, advocacy on a lot of the – in fact, I just saw Chris walk out the room, but he's going to talk to you some about the incentives that Louisiana has related to music and film. And so those have been areas that I've been real active in, as well as, uh, you know, other than the Grammy Awards, people ask what we do the rest of the year, and I do a lot of professional development kinds of uh, programming, and literally since the Treme TV show came yep. out, I've done two or three different kind of music supervisor related panels a year, uh, either standalone that we do ourselves, or we partner with other organizations, whether it's Jazz and Heritage Foundation, New Orleans Film Society, this event. Um, and as well as, you know, I cover a five-state region for the Grammys, so I've done them in St. Louis and Memphis and Lafayette and other mm -hmm. places as well. So this is a topic that's continually of interest to uh, musicians and composers and, and people in the industry. And um, I'm really thrilled that we're here today because we always need more opportunities to integrate the music composers and stuff with the people making film because I think, uh, you know, a lot of it starts locally and with the people that you know in your in your community and uh, and a lot of it is just happenstance it's being in the right place at the right time uh, Jay mentioned on his earlier panel for the few of those of you who were in here when he talked uh, via zoom earlier that you know networking and the uh, idea of um, you know luck and increasing your chances for luck to strike and being in the right place at the right time and getting to know people is really important. So one, I commend you on a Saturday morning for coming here and being no kidding, here <laughs> to, to learn and to meet people because that's really what all these kinds of things are about is to learn and meet people. So um, that's where it starts, yep. you know. So um, Jay. Yeah. So you talked about it, but you know, this title, what's the title of this panel? It's Passions and Inspirations, something like that. I was trying to think, yeah. of, how do we do this? Let, so you talked a little bit about what you're working on, and in, in your talk earlier, you mentioned uh, a lot of the different kinds of jobs that people might want to find that intersection of music and, and, tech and uh, film. But, yeah. you know, how did you break in? What was your first, I mean, you talked about the advertising thing, but, like, how did you first land of film scoring gig? Well, um, you know, the first one came to my company, so I won't go with that one. That was out of Shreveport, kind of a local. But that would say for anyone interested, the place to start is wherever you're standing. I mean, if you're, if you're in Slidell or New Orleans or Louisiana, wherever you are, Tennessee, somebody close to you is making a film. Mm -hmm. It is going on. People are doing it. Whether it's a documentary film, I'm scoring, I forgot, I'm scoring a documentary right now as well because it's a project, I like the topic of the project, um, and the guy that approached me, so I decided I would take it on. I'm doing with my assistant is helping with it because I don't have full, full, I don't have all my time to put on it. Um, but the first real big break for me with Los Angeles, I'll, I'll make this as quick as I can, but Lionsgate started coming to Louisiana to shoot. They were one of the first people to take advantage of the credit. And um, I met the music supervisor through Scott Ages, who was the music department at Lionsgate. And I met him because I had for years orchestrated and conducted for Terrence Blanchard. So I had a credit. I, I had worked with someone that was meaningful in a world, in a world where few people, people feel comfortable judging, judging who's, who's good for bad, bad in music. Because unless you're in music, it's intimidating to say, oh, he's good, he's not good. So who have you worked with? What have you done to become the biggest 
one of the biggest criteria a lot of people use. Since I had worked with Terrence, people would talk to me, and they would give me an opportunity. And it started very small. I, I put together an orchestra to record somebody else's score in New Orleans, and they did it. And on that same film, two months later, I was up in Pittsburgh, this is right after Katrina, with my son, who was three at the time. I was putting on a concert with Ellis Marcellus, Chris Thomas King, and Rebirth on New Orleans music. People were trying to get money down to New Orleans. So I get a call, I was getting ready to jump in the shower um, at five o'clock because they were picking me up at six o'clock to go to a, lunch, a dinner with the funders that, that, that were paying for the concert. And it was the music supervisor saying, hey, look, we're, we're mixing the film right now and there's a scene at the aquarium and we need some music for it. And I said, oh, I know exactly what you need. We have an aquarium in New Orleans. Look, I'll be back around 11 o'clock Eastern time zone. I can get you something by nine. He goes, no, I need it now. I said, dude, I'm naked. I'm getting in the shower. My little baby's sleeping. Right. He says, well, I don't care. I said, I know. So I pulled my computer out and I wrote a piece. I shot it to him in the shower. I mean, in the bathroom with just, you know, headphones on, a little synth in the box, as Greg said, just in my computer. And then I shot it to him. He said, oh, this is great, but I need it twice as long. And I said, well, just loop it. He goes, no, you loop it. So yeah. he sent it back to me. I actually flipped it backwards and then pasted it together and sent it to him. And he said to me on the phone, you're now my first call. And from that day forward, uh, Reed, that's Joel C. High that did all this. Uh, he and I, I've been working on, I don't know, 20 projects. It was a Tyler Perry movie. I've done about 20 projects with Tyler Perry. And then Warner Brothers called Joel and said, who do you work with in New Orleans? He gave him my phone number. Paramount called him, et cetera, and then it's just that word of mouth. It's a very small community out there, and once you do it well, they'll call you. But once you mess it up, they won't call you, so you've got to do it well. And that's really how I got started. In the shower in a hotel in Pittsburgh was my big break. I'm going to have to tease Joel about that. I love it, though. No, that's... That it's it's just so indicative of how this industry works, mm -hmm. and not just in film and music, all all of this industry yeah. is like that, right? What what was your first big break in? Gosh, man, you know, I I, I started in small films, and, and, and I would go to these film festivals, and I see I would suggest that's a great place to start. Go to your smaller film festivals. People are making these films, and it's a great place to cut your teeth and to look at places where music belongs in, in, in a film and start there because that's th those are the, that's that's that you never know when a, a Napoleon Dynamite's going to blow out of that or some you know some movie's going to blow out of that but but not only that it's just great training ground and so I got great training ground and I was doing these small films and then, and then back in the day uh, I get a call from uh, I, I was writing for Rick Wake at the time in New York and I was up there right living and writing and uh, and uh, he says, "Hey man, I got we got you uh, writing with Steven Seagal, <laughs> of all people." So you know, and he was in New Orleans for a, a yeah. little bit. Well, I didn't know what I was getting into, so I get out there and 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 and, uh, uh, and I'm I'm just basically handed, uh, you know, the the thing to to start scoring to to, to come up with stuff, you know, and uh, and. So it's me and DMX, who's a rap guy, he's passed on now. DMX was part of it. Uh, Dexter Redding, who's Otis Redding's son, was programming, doing some stuff. So we're out there working in this movie, and I'm coming up with songs, and all that Steven wanted to do was do 12-bar blues. Dun, 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 dun. And that doesn't fly. Sorry, man. Uh, uh, it doesn't really fly in a, you know, in a, unless you're doing a movie about blues, and what it would apply, you know? So, so I'm trying to get him to be more creative, and we're trying to talk him into be more creative, and his people, and it was just nuts to, 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 to get into this whole thing. So I would wind up, literally, I'd have to go to bed at five o'clock in the afternoon, and wake up at two in the morning, go on set and write with him, then get up again at like nine with the guys and start putting this stuff together, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, the, the things that he kept wanting to do, and also the, the people at, at Warner were wanting to do. And so I just got there, and I, what I would do is I would start with a, you know, just a, just a, a melody, and I'd, I'd play like a, 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 
whatever, whatever the piece would be, it would be like, a, and we 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 build stuff around that, you know, and then uh, that wasn't even the piece, but anyway, uh, uh, it was sort of like that, and we take and we'd have to build around that, you know, and build a and build orchestral uh, stuff around that. So that's what we did. We sat there and we. We figured out, you know, you know, I went to school for music at the University of Southern Mississippi, so I had a background in, you know, somewhat in orchestration. But I learned a lot on the job by being around these great guys. I learned a lot from Steve Dorf. Steve is another guy, a friend of mine. He's up in Nashville now too, by the way, uh, doing some stuff, um, and uh, and uh, just a lot of great people. I learned from. Uh, scoring and in, in, in the scoring uh, arena, and then I learned music supervision as well along the way. So I, I fell into that role. So we would need a song that was like for this, but like I said earlier, you never write to the scene. You always write a song that they feel like they can pull, and it feels like a, it, it, you know that they pulled a song that was a song that would apply to the movie, not a song written for the movie. You know what I mean? And people have a tendency to think that way to write for a movie. No, they want to find a song that has a thing that takes it, that gives it a little more, plays against type, I guess is the best way to put it. You know, and so, so I wound up getting in over my head a lot of times, but I learned how to swim really quick because I had, like, I had shoulders giants around me that taught me stuff, you know what I mean? So I was around these guys and, and so we, you know, we'd sit there and figure things out and back in the day, that was the infancy of like, you know, pretty much fixing things in Pro Tools and moving things around, and and so we 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 somehow did it, you know what I mean? It was just just crazy land. And then I went from you know doing that to doing a lot of television and st television stuff. So uh, I do we we do a lot of uh, orchestral arrangements for like scripts for ne uh, next uh, next star, which is a big media conglomerate. For uh, um, God, Sinclair, we've done it for everybody across the country for news packages, uh, and that's kept my chops up as far as that goes. And and uh, and, uh, and we, of course we do uh, you know uh, three to five million dollar pictures that we, we 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 can score and we can do them in the box and add strings over the top. And then we we do get the money to go into to go into Ocean Way, which is beautiful. I love it, and we get to do the whole shebang. We love that as well, but but you know, in a nutshell, that's what I, what I've done in, in in my life. I'm I'm a writer as well, so whenever they need something, I can jump in and go, okay, they need something that sounds like uh, uh, blah blah blah. But I have to be what's called derivative. I call it derivative writing because I can't be right on that. I can't copy that exactly, but I can have the essence. It's kind of like cologne. If you like this cologne, then you'll like this cologne. You know what I mean? But it's kind of like if you like this song, whether you like this song, well, we, we don't want to plagiarize anything, but we do want to get, you know, give them what they want as far as that, that scene or that, that, that kind of thing. So uh, that's, uh, you know, basically how, how we work, you know. If, any other things I can add to that? That blue, that time blue, I know it's a lot of great information, but you guys are out of time. We have our next session coming up. Oh, really? We have time. I know. Well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we probably have time for like two Jeez. Minutes, Okay. Yeah. They wish. But the next session is about the film incentives, it's about advocacy for the film industry, and it's about New Orleans' role as a major national film hub and how they're branching out and the opportunities. Yeah. I want to say something about that. We are trying to bring the, the music industry as it was back to this area and build an infrastructure that's going to be sustainable. And that's including the LPO, that's including all the elements of Louisiana that we have. We have a powerhouse. I see these guys, the reason we did this is I saw, I've seen so many talented people leave here and have to leave here. We don't need to do that anymore. I'm headed back this way, by the way. I'm, I'm trying to move my operation back this way. And so we have a, a Wayne, and, and Wayne and Quentin and I and a bunch of others, we have a thing called the A-Team. What we're doing is we're working towards bringing that back here uh, uh, the music element of that, the film element of that, making, bringing back uh, Louisiana as Hollywood South, like it was originally intended, and also getting it out of, m more out of politics and more into the private sector where things don't change as much. So, we got, so we've got like, hey man, we don't have to worry about every four years things change. We got, it's going up and up and up and up. And we got, L the, we got the LPO, these guys are, 
they're they're talented guys, man. They move here because they love New Orleans, and so the, I mean, and they're great musicians, right? Well, and I'll say too, you know, the reason that all of us have worked for these incentives wasn't to live and die by the incentives. The incentives were to incentivize the growth of the private sector industry, right? And so that's really the goal yep. of the incentives is to do exactly what you're saying, right. Greg. I mean. Jay, you know, Jay knows. Jay and Jay's come to Baton Rouge with me so many times to, to advocate right. for the, the laws that we now have on the books. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to get these things used in the short amount of time right. before they sunset and then reap the benefits of having a long-term sustainable business here. So um, I wish, you know, obviously yeah. we could talk for yeah. hours on this, um, but um, are there any real quick questions that before we like get kicked out? Table. Yeah we, we, yeah, we can talk outside for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, one other thing I'd like to say, guys, is real quick, is Marconi invented the radio, and, and thought is matter. Okay, what happens, I said this earlier, you know, thought is matter, because that became an electrical impulse in somebody's mind, and then it became a reality, you know, and so the same thing is happening here. You know, we, we, we think this up, and bam, all of a sudden it starts growing, and, we, and, and it becomes what it becomes. And the more people... Uh, the more this thing moves along, the more the more moss it gathers. And so that's all I want to say is we're doing it, guys. We're doing it with ozone, with with uh, everything that's got we got going on here. So anyway. I do have a question. Oh. Um, since Jay will be with us out in the hall, Jay, do you have some highlights that you'd want to share with us? Just something important on the about about this to share with us, since you won't be in the hall for us to ask you questions. <laughs> Look, I'll just build off of what, what um, Greg was talking about. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I've, and just so you know, Greg, I, I've kept my business and studio in New Orleans. I still have that. The reason, the reason I, I came, came up, up to Nashville, Nashville wasn't artistic. It was my stepson. You know, we had our first grandchildren born. Right. So right. I came up to help out there. And just mm -hmm. I opened up a studio here. And by coincidence, landed a film that was shot up here. Mm -hmm. But the TV show, I'm working on Interview with the Vampire. I, so I'll be down there 10 days next week. I'm doing music for that. So I, I've spent, yeah. I moved here in June, and I've spent, I've worked on four projects in New Orleans. So I still consider myself having an office in New Orleans. But what I want to say is uh, to build on Greg, one of the reasons I think Greg can succeed in coming back to New Orleans and building something is he has spent some time and made some contacts. And they're going to call Greg whether he lives in Nashville or whether he lives in, in Iran, they would call him because they mm. trust he'll get the work done. So I wouldn't underestimate the value of, I'm not saying you have to move, but I would say I used to take four to six trips a year to Los Angeles for a week at a time, make the rounds to the studios and with people to, to build, build the relationships that now call me. And they don't, right. COVID sort of has helped, right? Because we're gotten used to the Zoom thing. So people, People in LA aren't getting together. They're calling each other and Zooming for meetings. So it doesn't matter as much as if you're there, but it does matter that you've been there or Nashville or New York, yep. wherever the industry is, you need to go make contacts there. You yep. need to meet filmmakers if you want to write for film. And yep. there, there are some in Louisiana, but there are a lot more in other places. You don't have to live with them. You don't have to be there, but Greg's bringing not just his talent, he's bringing a, a a comet tale of contacts that he's built over 30 years of doing 40 years of doing this correct years, and, and years. people love louisiana they love coming here to work guys yeah yeah i mean they love coming here to work you know it's yeah. just amazing Absolutely. You know? new orleans is a great magnet for people yeah. in the like music but um it's it is not yet to your point to my point greg is that it's not quite at the point where just hanging in new orleans or louisiana is going to get you the amount of work you need to survive you yep. need to, to make, make those contacts, contacts and bring them back. back. That's, that's all. all. So we're doing so that's it. That's my, my advice. Mm -hmm. Thanks. See you in Nashville, man. Thank you.